Okay, so we're talking about we're defining quite a few things today. So it's just a lot of things to get through. If you'd rather not write it all, but just summarize it, and you know you have access to it later, that's fine. You can just sort of summarize it to go, get the key points out. So we're just going to go through how many things. So we're talking about collecting data. So we're going to talk about types of data and also about samples. So we just need to be aware of three, to break up of three types of data. <coughs> The first one is categorical data. So the idea, of course, is that the name suggests it's like in, in a category, and you can't really define it with a number. Categorical data, you can't say that it's represented with a number. So it's things like what music you like. It's surveying a favorite band. You can't say that this is one, this is two, this is three. It's just, it's just eat this band, or it's that band, or this category, or that band. All right, okay. Numbers. You can't really measure it. It's just either brown hair or blonde hair or red hair or black hair or whatever it is. Your preference for color, eye color, anything like that, which is all simply a matter of a category. Okay, so that's the first one. Then the second bigger, there's two big categories and then one the subcategory. And then the bottom bit data is data that you can measure numerically. Okay, so you can put a number to it. The first one that we have is the first one is a discrete. All right, so it's not the typical use of the word discrete. Discrete mathematics means <laughs> stepwise. Okay, step by step. So it's not continuous as the other one. So basically, it means it's either one or two or three or four. It goes up in steps. There's no range of values. So things like the number of bears in a forest, that's one of the discrete. You can measure that with a number, but you're not going to have half a bear. It doesn't work like that. You only have a whole bear, we have no bears. You can't have three quarters of it. Okay, so you can count this one, or it's not count all. Or number of people in the stadium, that's discrete value. You have 4,000 or 4,500 or 4,500 There's no decimal points or anything like that. And, okay, I'll, I'll find it for the shop. I mean, there's all sorts of examples. I encourage you to think about the examples to make sure you're clear. And then the other one is quantitative continuous. Okay, and that's the last part, which is sort of, it has a whole range of data. So, for example, your height, you could be 1.3 meters. Could be 1.301 meters, you can have any value in a particular range. Or you can have any value, any number of decimal points, and any accuracy. So that's the temperature. In fact, just to sort of often give an example of continuous size. Quite a bit continuous size. Height, distance, weight, anything that sort of varies along the scale rather than stepwise. Okay, so those are the three types. Let's do a couple of examples. So if we have which category of data these examples fall into? The number of lollies in a pack. Now, well, which which one would that be? Out of the three. Number of lollies. Yeah, it's discrete. You have one or two or three or five or ten. You don't count it as half of so that's point of the view. Then we have size of local ovals. Size of ovals. Yeah, it's continuous. Because it could be any size. Yeah, there's no restriction. It has to be a whole number. It has to be the same thing. So it's continuous. Favorite animals? <laughs> yeah. Because you can't, you can't measure that. It's just here you want animals. And then shoe size. Yeah, it's a bit, it's sort of debatable. Whether you can measure your foot with a ruler, it's continuous. Because it can be any size. But when you have shoe sizes, I think that I would say it's 
they either have seven or seven and a half or eight or seven, or seven. So they come in. They're sort of a bit of both, but I would say that's a discrete. Very discrete. Discrete. Right, so those are the types of jobs. Extra smooth reverse. And no, when someone says quantity is continuous, you know what they call. Okay. I'm coming to this space, send the motor riding to this Okay. Next thing we'll talk about, survey. So a survey is a way to gather data by asking questions to a sample of people. Like I said, lots of writing, you can go home and print it off. Instead, summarize it as we go. Constructed in such a way that you want to gather useful information. That's why companies, these big companies, spend lots of money developing surveys. Okay, it's not just for some guy sitting in a room and just putting a bunch of questions together. Carefully researched, carefully put together. And the reason for that is they can lead to errors depending on how you phrase a question. If the question is loaded towards a certain type of answer you want to get, whether it's yes, no, or open-ended, all these sort of things actually make a difference to the data that you're going to collect. And so it's really important that surveys are done properly when they're used for various purposes. Yes, certain questions can actually push people to formulate a picture. I'll show bias and all that sort of thing. It's very important that it makes sense and you carefully throw it out. Actually, collecting the information that you want to collect. Okay, and so the number of people you're asking the survey is also important. That's where we're going to talk about the sample size. But the data will be different based on the number of people you talk to. If you talk to five people, you might say 80% of people like a certain product. But where did you get those people from? Who are they? Are they old? Are they young? Are they male? Are they female? And then if you ask 20 people instead of 5, the results could change completely. If you ask 100 people, then the results might change completely again. So it's really important that you are thinking about how these things affect the results. So the definition of population, population means all the people in a particular category. Okay, so the population of Australia everyone who lives in Australia. So that's what the population is. And you can also have the population of the school. The population of the school is anyone who goes to school. Anyone who's involved in school. You have population of fish in a fish tank. Oh, it's a lot of The population of a fish tank is all the fish in the fish tank. Okay? Et cetera, et cetera. The population of trees in a forest, all the trees in the forest. Which means that when you consider a population, you have to consider the whole, all the, all the people, or all the objects, or all the animals, or whatever. Everything has to be taken into account when you're doing more of the population. Right? So that's the definition of population. And just to note, census, census is a survey. So when you have a census, by definition, you don't ask about sample size or anything. A census takes into account everybody in the population, everybody in that group. So the census of Australia 
is a survey of everybody in Australia. Yeah, that's why it's such a big deal. Sensing, they don't do it very often. How often do they sense this? Every five years. So they collect data about people in Australia. Staring out there, this many schools or any building. So that's the census and that's population. Where is Tuckery County? I'm going to just stick this. I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay. Now we want to talk about samples. So, a sample is a part of the population that is certain. So, a sample is a smaller part of the whole population. And it's important that a sample needs to be representative. Otherwise, it's useless as a sample. The sample has to actually reflect the reality in the population. Which means that sample size is very important. Because, like I was saying before, if you only ask five people something, if I ask the four guys in the back there a question, let's say, what's your favorite type of music? They're going to need to give me an answer. What is your favorite type of music? Swing. Punk? What's yours? Punk? What's yours? What's yours? So then, and if I survey those four guys and I say, okay, 100% of Australians like punk. Is my sample representative? Yeah. Screamer, whatever. Yeah. 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 No, I don't. So that's why I'm saying that. That sample is not representative. And the sample size is a big part of it. If I only have four people, I can't make conclusions about. I can't make conclusions from asking four people about the whole of Australia. That's my point. Okay, you probably, asking 12 people or four people would not be representative, but probably if you ask a thousand people at sort of random about their musical preferences, you will get a fairly good representation of what it means. Yeah. So they ask. Even a smallish sample, like 200, if it's done randomly and well, even 200 people can actually be quite representative of all the first half of the United States. Say 200 people somewhere in Sydney can be quite representative of all the first half of the United States, which we'll have a look at. So, the first one, a random sample, uh, this is selected at random out of the population. So, for example, if you just stood at a gate of a shopping center or at the doorways, and ask people as they came in at random, that's a random sample. You're just choosing all your names out of the power. You're just putting a random sample. Yeah, in general, it's pretty really random. Too. There's a couple of other things that people can do really well. The stratified sample, you select several categories, which are called stratas, and then out of those strata, you choose at random. So basically what you're doing is you have a particular sample size, and within those sample sizes you say that <coughs> this many come from here, this many come from here, this many come from here, this many come from here. And then out of those areas is that random, but it's a little bit more sort of spread out. So for example, if I wanted to survey a sample of Australians, if I wanted to do it in a stratified way, I would say, well, I want people from a country town, or a couple of countries down, there was one from Newcastle, maybe from Sydney, maybe from Melbourne. You decide on what percentage you want from each one, and then within those strata or groups, it's completely at random. Okay, so it's different from being random in the sense you're not just picking from anywhere. You're a bit organized to start with, but then out of those numbers, you're breaking it up into different categories. Are there any questions about stratified numbers? Oh, you could, so for example, in Sydney, the random just go to a few places and then ask people around them. Or 
point is this, you, you'll carefully select the areas that you think will help you represent the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all that's a good thing to describe. Otherwise, it's just, it's just, you're not really collecting any of these random Okay? The last one I have, the third one is here. Systematic sample Guys. A systematic sample occurs when the population is divided into a structured sample size. Right? For example, the students in the school population are put in alphabetical order, and the hundred students, two hundred students, three hundred students are selected. Systematic sample is often used by manufacturing and ensure the machines are working correctly. Okay, so this is not random. You're saying that, for example, you have 300 things or people <coughs> in your population, and you say, I want to choose every 30, or every 10 persons. So you have 100 people plus 10, 9, 10, 100 people plus 10, 9, 10, and you're picking every 10. So it's much more systematic than just random and saying, you, 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 System, so, for example, this manufacturer might test the machine every 30 minutes and take the 50th item on the production. Because so that's important for them because they want to make sure that over a steady course of time, the quality and everything is, is made into a double standard. Okay? So, there's a gap between them. around them, again, it's just random. I can pick three people in the road here. I wait around 100 persons in the road and do it. So the next sense of the three types of sounds of random is completely random, stratified, it's breaking it up into groups, and then within those groups, it's random. Systematic, you know how many there are, so from within that, you want to sort of say, out of that population, I want to take any 10, so only 100, okay? So those are the ideas. So, we'll go back to this guy. So we've got... Exercise 4.4 and 4.5, and I think there are some, I'll just go to do this anyway, so let's just, I'll go through this, actually, before you do the exercises, let's talk about capture, recapture, technique. Of course, hands up if you know about the capture, recapture technique. So the idea with this is, when you don't know what the size of the population is, you use this technique to do it. Basically what it is, is you have a thing that you want to find out about. So typically it's fish. <coughs> so we'll do this example. So a ranger wants to know the number of possums in a forest. So he goes and he traps so he captures 25. Right? So he traps around here 25 of them. And he tags them with a tag. Then you release them into the water. A little while later, you go back and you catch it 20, set 20 traps and then caught 20 possums. Okay? Out of those 20, four of them have packs. So now we can say, well, let's approximate what the population is. Okay? So this is how, this is the way that we need to do it. Okay? So four out of 20 have packs. Okay. Four out of twenty have packs. <coughs> which is equivalent to when he first captured it was twenty-five out of the whole population. Okay, so four out of twenty were tax. And so if you put it in terms of that's representing the whole population, you say, well twenty-five out of X. So X is the population. Right? Now, if we solve this equation, 1 over, this is 1 fifth, which is 25 over x, we multiply both sides by x, so we get x at 1 over 5, which is 25, and if we multiply both sides by 5, we get 
x equals 125. Therefore, approximately So the, the idea of the capture recapture technique, what you're saying is the ratio of when you catch them tag to the total swing up. The ratio of the tagged animals out of the total number you capture the second time is the same as the ratio of the number that you tag of the whole population. And so you use that then to solve to find the whole population. Alright? That's just a very brief thing. We're back to 4.2.